Hi everyone, uh, Keith Boland here with my mom, Brenda. And we just want to say how much we are missing our church family and, and being together for Sunday service. And also, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. I uh, hope you're having a, a great weekend and hope to see you soon. Bye. Goodbye. Hey everybody, hope you're all having a good summer. I can't wait to see you all in the fall when I go back to WNJ. Good morning, church family. We hope that you're all happy and healthy. We miss you all. Welcome to worship on June 21st, the longest day and shortest night of the year. We hope that this will be a good day for you, and we hope and pray that your having visited this virtual worship service will make your life a better sort of offering to God and to the world. Thank you for being with us. Let us worship God. Today's scripture passage is from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, beginning at verse 28. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of those sparrows will fall to the ground without your father's will. But even the hairs on your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before people, I will also acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before people, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword, for I have come to set one person against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes will be those of his own household. 
He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does, he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. The witness to God's word, thanks be to God. It takes a lot of courage to be a person of faith, a Christian. The Bible says that perfect love casts out fear. And in today's scripture passage, we heard how disciples were being encouraged not to be afraid as they went out to represent Jesus. Don't be afraid. Now, telling people not to be afraid is an easy thing to do, but sometimes it's easier said than done. We know that fear is part of who we are. It's something irrational, sometimes built into who we are to protect us from places where we have that fight or flight inst instinct that allows us to be safe and run away, run away, to run away fast. I know of people who are afraid of heights, people who are afraid of flying in airplanes, and it doesn't matter how much data we offer to say that statistically you're safer in an airplane than you are driving around in your car. If it's a fear, if it's an irrational fear of flying or heights or spiders or snakes or things that go bump in the night, we can be afraid. If perfect love casts out fear and if God's love for us is perfect, there is hope for us to be able to face our fears and move ahead with confidence in the world, which means sometimes taking some judici judicious risks uh, to go out on the limb. It's been said uh, you go out on a limb because that's where the fruit is. And in terms of our lives being fruitful and productive for God, it's a matter of our sometimes having courage in the face of fear something that's sometimes not easy to do. Helen Keller has always been one of my most admired people, and one of her quotes is that uh, life is either an exciting adventure or nothing at all. And that uh, is, a, is a phrase that moves me, from somebody that couldn't see nor hear, who could have sat off in the corner feeling sorry for herself. You have this courageous woman who lived a life that was so full that it inspired so many different people's lives in so many different ways. People would say, you know, if Helen Keller could do that, what could I do? What are you doing with your life? What am I doing with my life? What's the meaning of life? The scripture passage today invites us, encourages us to live lives of faith following in the footsteps of Jesus. And this is not something that is for the faint of heart nor for uh, people who lack courage. You can be afraid and practice courage. In fact, the best courage is practiced in the face of fear as we try new things, as we expand boundaries, as we reach out into places where we've never been and go places where, where God calls us to be in service to others. The scripture passage today talks about ways in which people are either followers of God first and foremost or not. In fact, today's passage is reminiscent of a couple of commandments that tell us to keep the Sabbath holy, to put God first in our lives, that we should worship the Lord our God with our whole being and that we should have no other gods before the true God, no idols. And it's so easy in the world to worship other things. In our culture, often it's uh, where you live or what your job is or how much money you have, and that's how we place value on life. Not so for Jesus. He lived a humble life of service, filled with courage, not to mention apprehension. Uh, Jesus was afraid at times too. Do not forget his time in the Garden of Gethsemane praying, saying, you know, if there's any way for this cup to be taken from me, meaning if there's any way of my getting out of being crucified, you know, get me out of here, let me out of this. 
And there was no way to do that. So Jesus prays, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And having said that, Jesus courageously followed where God was calling him to be, even to death on the cross. And he did it for all of us because God cared so much for us. And God calls us to live exciting, courageous lives of discipleship, which shows up for us in many different kinds of, of ways. There are people for whom uh, the thing on their bucket list before they die might be to jump out of a, out of a perfectly good airplane uh, with a parachute, parachute to, to go skydiving, and there are people that do that. For other people, it might be something that's less uh, scary, you would think, from a distance, but maybe frightening to the individual, like public speaking. Uh, a lot of studies show that the number one fear that people have in life is public speaking, that they're afraid to speak publicly. In fact, one of the studies shows that people are more afraid to be speaking in public than they do of dying. They're more afraid of speaking publicly than of dying which uh, you can do combinations. Like one of my fears is, is uh, dying while public speaking. You know, you can do combinations, uh, which I've done many times, people tell me, in terms of the content of what I'm doing. Uh, but we're not talking about a dead faith. We're talking about a living faith where people aren't just going through the motions. What is God calling you to be about today? What is God inviting you to be up to today? What are the talents and skills that God has given you and have you tried to exercise those lately to make a difference? If you look around in the world, there's all kinds of need in all sorts of directions. There's need for help in the lives of people that you know personally, intimately. There's need for people in the community, especially in times where, where uh, unemployment is, is running high as people have not been able to go back to work, where our food banks are in need of help and support, or people who are very proud or sometimes being very hungry just to get through this because, as you know, we Americans are to be self-sufficient. But we're all in this together in this gift of life. And Jesus, more than anybody else, demonstrated the way in which we are all connected one to the other and that our help is in the name of the Lord and that our resources are designed for helping other people who need to know the tender, loving touch that God has for them. You need that tender, loving touch, and God offers it to you directly through gifts from the Holy Spirit, directly through people that know you and love you and support you and encourage you. And God is with you at all times and in all places. Whether you are alone, wondering when it's safe to go back out again, perhaps even someday without a mask, times when you're afraid uh, whether or not you should go to the grocery store or to a, a restaurant or to some public place, God goes with you there. And God calls us to put our priority of loving God first and foremost to the exclusion of anything and everything else. So I won't go into great detail. You heard in this passage that Jesus said, I didn't come to bring you peace. I, brought, I came to bring you a cross, to bring you courage to go into warfare on behalf of the needs and well-being of others. And sometimes that will put you in conflict with the most intimate of your family members. I had to chuckle when that said that, that fathers and daughters and mothers and sons and other relatives are going to be not getting along because uh, one really wants to follow Jesus and perhaps the other one does too, but they're at odds on how that's done. Uh, and I had to chuckle at the place where it said that, that uh, daughters-in-law and mothers-in-law would be at odds, especially in a season when my own wife has been so good to her mother-in-law, my mom, who by the grace of God is still with us. God invites us to be courageous followers who are disciples willing to take up our cross and follow. And that cross comes in different shapes and sizes. Sometimes it's a burden, but God makes our burdens light, especially when we're following in the footsteps of Jesus, doing our very best to love other people. I encourage you to let God help you deal with your fears. I invite you to look around to see places where it might be risky business to 
reach out and serve others. You might be nervous about that. And to know that God gives us courage to go to those places, just as God gave Jesus courage to live his life so fully on our behalf. So today, make a difference from where you are. If you can't get out into the world, use your telephone or social media, text or call or, or email or yell to your neighbor some word of encouragement and hope. We need it these days. The world needs it. God is with us now and always through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from above, over and around us lies, Lord of all to Thee we raise, As we prepare to pray this morning, we uh, let you know that there'll be some time during this prayer for you to have some silence to pray for other people in other places, and also some silent time where you're invited to pray for yourself. Also, when we get to the Lord's Prayer portion of the prayer, today we'll be using the sins and those who sin against us version of the prayer. Feel free to join us out loud when we get to that part of the prayer. Shall we pray? Loving God, we thank you for knowing us and loving us human beings so intimately that we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you care for us personally. Your scripture today tells us about your knowing sparrows and knowing each one that falls and that you number the hairs on our heads, which for some people is more or less hair, yet no matter what those numbers might be and how they might change, you know us through and through. And we thank you for that intimate connection and for the way that you care so deeply for us. We know that that intimacy leads to our loving you and following your son Jesus. And we pray for your help in that endeavor, following in his footsteps, doing our very best to do what he would do in our place. 
We thank you for being with us at times when following him means serving you with courage and conviction and sometimes speaking up and speaking out for other people as well as for ourselves. We thank you for being with us in this worship service and throughout every day of our lives and every night of our lives. And we come to you now in a time of quiet reflection to pray for other people and other places that could use your hope-filled healing support. Be with us, gracious God, as we come to you in a time of silence to pray for other people about whom we care and other places about which we care, knowing that you already care about them too. Hear us as silently now we pray for others. Thank you for hearing our prayers for others. We come to you now to talk with you about our own lives, knowing that you know us intimately even better than those sparrows and you care about us with every beat of our hearts and every breath that we take. So we come to you now to bring to you our hopes and dreams, as well as our fears and frustrations as you call us into faithful discipleship. Be with us now, gracious God, as we come to you in this time of silence. Hear us as silently now we pray for ourselves. Thank you for hearing our prayers for ourselves. As we have prayed silently, so now we follow in the footsteps of Jesus by praying familiar words that he taught his disciples while he was yet among us. Hear us as we pray the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer, as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I charge you to fearlessly live lives of courageous discipleship however that translates for you. You can make a difference in the world in the name of Jesus Christ. And as you do so, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, both now and forevermore, amen. <laughs>